Hello and welcome to United Presbyterian Church. Uh, even though we're still practicing social distancing, we hope that you are well. Uh, even though the church is closed, if you do need something, call. And uh, someone is answering the phone and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Our passage of scripture this morning is from the Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning in verse 13. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast, and one of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened in these past days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things, then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked? On the road and opened the scriptures to us. And they got up and hurried to return to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Let us pray. Dear God, we ask that something unexpected happen as we worship you this morning. As we hear the words of Scripture, as your Spirit moves in our hearts, for we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our passage this morning is my favorite post-resurrection account in the Gospels. It was on that first Easter Sunday morning that two of the group that the women had told that Jesus had risen were walking to Emmaus. And as they walked and they talked to one another, trying to make some sense of what had been going on the last couple days, Jesus walked up to them, although they didn't recognize him. And he asked them, what is it that you're talking about? What's going on here? And they said, are you the only visitor here in Jerusalem who, who doesn't know what's been going on here these several days? And so they proceeded to tell him about Jesus of Nazareth, that the one that they thought was a prophet of God, that the authorities had turned over to the Romans to be crucified. And he was crucified three days ago and buried. And now it's the third day. 
And some women had gone to the tomb early that morning and, and they found the tomb empty and they came home telling us that Jesus had been raised from the dead. And Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets had written about the Christ. And he began to open the scriptures to them beginning with Moses and the prophets. The climax of the story and my, my favorite depiction of what happens to us when we celebrate communion is when they recognized him. Because then as they got close to their home, Jesus appeared to be going further and the disciples wanted him to stay because the day's almost over and so he came in and while he was there, he sat down at the table, he broke bread. And in that breaking of bread, they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. And so today what I want to do is I want to look at this passage, but I want to concentrate on that part where they, they recognize Jesus, where they recognize God. I want to focus in on those couple passages of Scripture and see if we can't find some help in recognizing God ourselves. Do you ever feel like God just isn't there? You just can't sense God's presence in the moment with you. And in the midst of the COVID-19 virus, you know, some people may not even feel God's presence at all, while others might have this time to sense God's presence very real for them, and very close to them. Sometimes our feelings tell us we just can't sense God. He's not here. Perhaps it's we are thinking that prayers have gone unanswered or, or there's been a series of disappointing events or someone that we've trusted and been very close to us has betrayed us. And each of these things can make us feel that God is not here, that he's not paying attention to us. But sometimes we get so busy and so caught up in the things that we're doing that we're not paying attention to God and so we think he's just kind of left us alone. And yet God promised that he would never leave nor forsake us. And so we can be sure that God is always with us, even when we're struggling to sense that that's true. And so what do we do when we feel that God is not present? How do we regain that sensing of God's presence? There are several ways that you and I can use to rekindle and feel God's presence. The first one I want to suggest is not necessarily an easy one. It just depends upon your personal level of integrity and mine. You need to come clean with God. Sometimes we can't feel God's presence because there's something that's standing between ourselves and God or between ourselves and somebody else that is blocking us from sensing the presence of God. God hasn't left. But our sensitivity to his presence is blocked by some sin that we have that's there between ourselves and our neighbors or between ourselves and God. And so we have to ask ourselves the question, is there anything that's going on that's separating us from someone or some God? Someone we're at odds with in the family. Perhaps maybe there's somebody between us that we work with, something going on there, or maybe there's something with a neighbor, or it could even be with a church member. And all of this can be even more disturbing to us, even in the midst of social distancing. But David, in the psalm, he wrote this. When I kept silent about, about his sin, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and you did not cover up my iniquity. When we come clean in our relationships with one another and with God, then we can begin to sense the presence of God. It is in confession that the presence of God it flows again. But sometimes reading scripture will help us regain a, a sense of God's presence. We suggest that when you read scripture out loud, you sense the Bible's power in that word. 
Reading aloud is different than reading silently, and I suggest you try it. I know sometimes I often hear better when I read the scriptures aloud or I listen to somebody else reading a passage of scripture. Another way to experience the presence of God is to sing a song. Even if you're one of the ones like me that have a voice that's made only for the shower or for when nobody else is at home, try it. Or listen to some hymns or some praise songs on a CD. On more than one occasion, people have said that they have had tears in their eyes when they've been in worship and they've had been singing hymns or praise songs and ever wonder why you feel closer in that experience because it is through music oftentimes that we have true worship. The hymns and praise songs that you sing that, or those ones that go around and around in your head can be prayer. Prayers that you offer to God. It's also a funny thing and a sad thing that so many people use God's name right and left. It can be a swear word or in thoughtless expression. And however, we do need to be saying God's name and talking about God and Jesus. And some say that talking about God out loud is something that brings calm to our spirit. And, and so I can suggest that you might try a breath prayer. Breathe in one word and breathe out the second word. Breathe in love and breathe out Jesus. Love Jesus. Or breathe in praise God. Praise. There are times when we need him, but we just don't know what to say or where to start. And so start by saying God's name or, or Jesus' name. And maybe you just say, I, I need you, but I don't know where to start or what to ask. Well, just take a walk if you can do that safely today in the midst of the COVID-19 virus. For exercise brings your body and mind and heart to life and feel spiritually dead. Get outside, move around again as you can safely, and confess to him what's on your heart and what's on your mind. And finally, just breathe deeply. You know, sometimes we're so pressed in by the concerns that we have, too many thoughts running around in our brains, too much worry, too much anxiety, and so we center our mind on him. And just breathe deeply. Exhale the distracting thoughts. Inhale the desire to sense his presence. Exhale your preoccupation with self. Inhale a desire to know him more completely. completely. Exhale the worries of the moment. Inhale his peace. But recognizing Jesus, recognizing God, isn't something that happened to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus that Sunday. Recognizing Jesus wasn't frozen only in that time to be a memory found in Scripture. It can be a real life, real experience for us. Several men and their spouses are gathering weekly on Zoom to talk about the book God Wakes. I understand some women will be discussing that book as well. And in that book, the author suggests what he calls God Wakes. Other people might call coincidence or God incidents, but he calls them God Wakes. There are those times when God winks at us to let us know that he's there or that things are okay. I want to share with you just a couple of God winks just to give you a flavor of that. And the one was a man named Ken. He was part of a family ministry that toured around the country. And on this particular day, he was oppressed on every side, you know, with uncertainty. What am I to be doing, God? Why am I here? 
he was kind of dozing in the family caravan and they decided that they would stop at the next rest stop so they pulled in someplace in Ohio and as all the family got out of their several vehicles they started heading to the gas station and Ken said go ahead I'm just going to take a walk and he took a walk and he walked across the gas station and as he was walking he passed a telephone booth an empty telephone booth nobody around it and as he walked past it it started to ring and he didn't know what to do it startled him at first and, you know did he does he answer it does he keep on going what is it he does and, and finally he decides to answer it and he says hello and the operator on the other end says I have a person to person call for Ken and he looks around because he's sure he's got to be on candid camera or something, but there's nobody in sight. And so after a few incredible seconds, which seem like minutes, the operator reports, reports or says again, I have a person person call for Ken. And so he accepts the call. As from a moment, he discovers her name is Millie and, and that she had seen him one time on television and, and she was sitting down writing that day her suicide note because things were so bleak in her life. And suddenly his name popped up and a phone number. I have no idea where that phone number came from. It just popped up for her and she called it. It's that phone booth in that gas station somewhere in Ohio when Ken was there. He assures her that God loves her and cares for her and that this time will pass and prays with her a span of about 10 minutes. Sometime later, he was back in her hometown touring with his family, and this woman came up and said, I'm Millie. I talked to you on the phone. But that sudden phone call in that strange place, that God wink, Ken knew I'm doing what God wants me to do. I'm where I'm supposed to be. The second one I want to share with you is about Emmett Kelly, that sad faced hobo flying, weary, weary Willie, who always had a sad face except for one time. There was only one time in his entire life that there was a picture of him smiling. And it happened the day that he ha was being interviewed by somebody from United Press and a UPI a photographer. And during that interview, the doctor called and said, you're the father of a brand new baby girl. And his face lit up and click. They took the picture. That's the only picture there ever was of weary Willie. His grown-up daughter was talking to him on the phone because he was now 80 years old and getting at the end of life and they were reminiscing about things and so on. And Emma died the next morning. His daughter was now flying to be where his father was, her father. And on the in the airport she grabbed a newspaper and so she's on the plane and she's seated there and she's thinking about that phone conversation she had with her father the night before and the things that they talked about the memories that they shared and she turns away from the window of the airplane and there's some tears down her cheek and her seat companion says you know miss are you all right and she says to him my father died this morning and I'm on my way home. Then she pointed to the picture that she, uh, from the newspaper that she had grabbed that picture of the smiling, weary Willie. And see, companion's face went ashen. I took that picture. I was a photographer there that day when the doctor called to say you were born. I took that picture. The story goes on that they became friends, but, but there was a peace that flowed over Emma Kelly's daughter. And she understood that God, her, Emma, her father was by the side of God and was looking down on her. She was flooded with peace. You see, recognizing Jesus in the breaking of bread or, or in the other people around us or, or wherever it is can, is not something that just happened to disciples back in the New Testament time. It's something that can happen 
to you and to me today. And there, when things get in the way, there's ways to try and recapture that sense of God's presence in our lives right here, right now. A God wink, perhaps. Let us pray. Dear God, we are so grateful that you are present in our lives, but there are times when we don't see that. And so we're grateful for the God wings. We're grateful for the words of encouragement from other believers. We're grateful for hymns that go around and around in our minds that rekindle our sensitivity to your presence. We're so grateful for that, for the power of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And we pray for everyone today, those that are out of work, those that are first responders, those that are on the front line in the midst of this virus, those that are sick and those that are mourning the deaths of loved ones. Help us to know how we can help, how we can support, who it is that we need to contact to encourage, who it is that we need to say a kind word to. Help us to be your people in the world. Help us to speak your words of love and compassion that you might be glorified and hear the prayers that we offer quietly in our hearts for the decisions we have to make, for the things that we're struggling with, and for the many other things that we offer to you in the presence of our, our quiet hearts today. But we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. And now to God who is able to do much more than you and I can ever imagine. By the power of the Holy Spirit which is at work in our Creator's church. May there be glory and honor to Jesus now and forever. Amen.